everyone. Today I wanted to share with you my favorite albums and EPs that were released in 2022. A couple quick disclaimers. Sorry for any background noise or dust particles that may occur throughout this video. I'm going to be reading off my phone as I always do. And if I have any notes that I forget to add, check down below. I might have a pinned comment. And let's get into it. At number nine, I'm going to have End in Darkness, Heart to Glow by White as Blood. So I believe I listened to Titanic Rising. I might have liked a few songs off there. I honestly cannot really remember how I feel about it, but I remember not absolutely loving it. And the reason why I decided to listen to this album was because the album cover really intrigued me so I was like you know might as well give it a listen and this is something I really enjoy just because the production is so lush and cinematic and very cool so I really love the production all the way throughout this thing I love her vocal on here I can appreciate the lyrics too so it was a good listen for me I haven't been able to spend as much time with this album as I would have liked so I'm excited to listen to it more in the future for sure in terms of my favorite tracks the first one that I've written down is going to be it's not just me it's everybody I really love the vocals on it the progression just really interesting to listen to in my personal opinion and then I also have children of the empire this is always the one that kind of like stuck out to me most sonically in the album so I really quite enjoy it and then the last one that I've run down today is going to be the worst is done I really like this one melodically I can just appreciate every single thing about it and now it's number eight which is going to be hold the girl by Rina Sawayama I think that this is a good sophomore album overall I loved her debut album one of my favorite debut albums of all time of course and so for this one I think that the production is still very cool overall to listen to and so it's something that really kind of pulls me in especially on a song like holy till you let me go for example and so I kind of appreciate the chances that she takes to the production. I love the production on Hurricanes, for example. I feel like we have a lot of gems on this record and it's pretty consistent for the most part. Some songs that I would personally skip on this album, Imagining, it's just not really one that I can get to. I believe that they pitched up her vocal and then pitched it down something around there. Just not personally for me, it's kind of just there to me and those kind of moments on the album are not really my bag sonically. Also, I said in my album reaction for this, I was like, oh, I don't really like your age that much. And honestly, looking back at it now, I'm kind of like split on it. Like I get why I did that voiceover because listening to it again, I wasn't like loving the song. But I don't think that it's bad at all. I think that This Hell is a great lead single for the album and something that I quite enjoy listening to, something that's fun, and she knows how to write a hook. So it was something that I really liked. And in terms of my favorite songs on this record, I love the title track so, so much. I really love the chord progression, how the song progresses is something that's fascinating to listen to. And I really love her vocals. Songwriting is great, just everything that I could have asked for. And then I also really quite love Frankenstein as well. This is one that I was able to appreciate more because she just released a music video for it. I thought that the visual really matched up to what you're getting from the track but wow it's something that's kind of like eerie but very cool overall to listen to and so she just really ate the song up and then I also really loved Catch Me in the Air as well like I said before it's kind of giving like late 90s early 2000s in terms of the production which I absolutely love I love the places that she takes her vocal the progression I like the sentiment of the song I think that she just handled it beautifully and then the last one that I'll mention today is Send My Love to John I think that this is one of the best vocal performances on the album absolutely beautiful to listen to I really love the guitar in here I love the lyrics I love the progression as well and I can also appreciate how she handled the subject matter and delivered it to us. I think that everything was really well done in this track. I feel like this is a good sophomore album overall. I would recommend listening to it if you enjoyed her first album. At number seven is going to be Blue Water Road by Kehlani. So I'm really glad that I gave this a shot because I remember really liking the Sweet Sexy Savage album. And so I don't know why I kind of fell off Kehlani after that even though I enjoyed the music, right? And so then I was like, you know, let me check out this album because people were saying good things about it. And so I did check it out one day, did my own reaction to it. And it was something that I really enjoyed. I think that this is a stunning record overall. Overall, I feel like it's really healing to listen to and you can just really feel where Kehlani is at and there's just a piece of this record that I really quite like. I think Kehlani is one of the best artists out in R&B right now. Decent songwriter. Whenever they perform live, it sounds exactly like the studio version, if not better. And so I really enjoy what they bring to the table. And they have such a confidence on the record that I really enjoy. But there's also some really nice moments that I really quite like. The song Everything is Good. Like I said, it still kind of bothers me whenever they're like, oh, it's the everything for me because there's that whole trend. It's the, you know, blank for me. And so kind of listening to that might make me cringe a little bit but that song is so gorgeous to listen to overall I really like what was done there so we have moments like that and then we have bangers on here and now let's get into my favorite song because it kind of ties in there so my favorite song on this record is going to be wish I never this has a slick rick sample which was used in a Montel Jordan song called this is how we do it and so that's kind of like how I'm familiar with it and so I really appreciate how the sample was incorporated I just love this song it's something that's so entertaining to listen to overall Kehlani dominates this track I love the lyrics that were written over I think everything comes together really nicely and definitely one of my favorite songs to come out this entire year, 100%. And so it's fascinating to me to learn that they had to be convinced to put the song on the record because I do think that this is the best song on there and I can't imagine it not being on there. But I'm really glad that they were able to be convinced in the end because I love this record so, so much. I also really quite like Any Given Sunday with Blast as well. I think that it is just a decent track to listen to. I really appreciate the Blast feature on there. Kehlani absolutely dominates this. I love the melody on this track. Everything comes together really nicely on this again. And then the last track that I have written down is going to be All I can appreciate
appreciate how the subject matter was approached. I think that they did it beautifully. And so there's just a lot to love about this track and definitely a highlight on the album for me for sure. And now let's get into a few songs that I would skip on the record. So first up I have Up All Night with Justin Bieber. I would like it more if Justin Bieber wasn't on the song. Like it's just not giving, it's giving bland. Like I'm just not really enjoying his contribution to the track, right? And I just don't really care for the song that much in general. It's kind of one of the weaker songs to me on the record. And then also I don't really care for the Sid track either. That one just doesn't really go where I was hoping sonically and it's something that is boring to me to listen to. But I really like all the other tracks on the album. Definitely one of my favorite R&B releases this year. And now to number six, which is going to be Dance Fever by Florence and the Machine. So this is actually the first Florence and the Machine record that I've ever listened to. I've heard of them before, but for whatever reason, I just didn't really care to listen to any of the records until this point. And so I'm really glad that I gave this one a shot because I quite enjoyed it. I just really love how dynamic this record is. I feel like there's some moments that are like really haunting about it, but it's something that's still cool to listen to. I love a track like Choreomania, for example. That one is just really enjoyable to listen to. And then you also have a track like Back in Town, which is cool. And then there's also Heaven is Here, which is something that I really enjoy just because of how the rhythm is on that song. It's really cool to listen to. And so one thing that I really love about this album is just how dynamic the instrumentation is. And it's something that is always a treat to listen to all throughout this thing. I think that the songwriting on here is great as well. So that's something that I always really appreciate. Florence Welsh has some great vocals on here. So I really love what she's doing on here. And so yeah, this was a really enjoyable album for me to listen to. In terms of my favorite songs on here, I really like Dream Girl Evil. I should have added it to my favorite songs to 2022 list. Shame on me for doing so because this is definitely a highlight on the record. I just really like the vocal on here. And then I also really quite like Cassandra. It's kind of something that is very suspenseful, at least for me to listen to. And so I really like how it progresses in the vocal and the lyrics and just everything ties together nicely on this song. And then the last song that I've written down is going to be Daffodil. Now, this is one that kind of blew me away whenever I listened to it because it's something that's completely different than you would expect. The chorus isn't really the traditional chorus that you would get, but somehow she's still able to make it work. And so that's something that's really fascinating to listen to. So I really like the progression of the song more than anything, but I think that it's a great track. And in terms of the songs that I would skip on this album, I'm going to say Restraint. I think I understand what she was trying to do with this song, but for me, it just doesn't work. And so I do skip the song on the album, but everything else on this album is great. Now on to top five at my fifth slot, I'm going to have Midnight's so the 3am edition by Taylor Swift. So overall, I think that this is a decent addition to her discography, probably a top five Taylor album for me. And I'm just really glad that we got Pop Taylor back. Like I said before, 1989 was the first album that I ever listened to from her in full. And so that album kind of has a special place in my heart. And also I think that the album is just pop perfection. And then I kind of got back into her around Folklore Evermore time. And so I was just really itching for her to get back to doing pop music. And so to have Pop Taylor back once again is definitely a treat for me. I think that her vocals overall on the album are good to listen to. I can really appreciate what's going on on there for sure and it really shines in a song like labyrinth for example and it's kind of reminding me of a song like epiphany from folklore like i was mentioning then i saw people say it was reminding them of the archer from the lover album which i can see as well and then also i think that her songwriting on here generally is great taylor's one of the best songwriters of all time one of my favorite songwriters ever and all credit to her as a songwriter of course there's a few moments that made me cringe though like an anti-hero whenever she says sometimes i feel like everybody is a sexy baby and i'm the monster on the hill like i just really cannot stand that lyric and every single time i listen to this song I do cringe a little bit and so there's some more moments like that that I'll talk about later but generally I feel like the songwriting on this album holds up. I can appreciate the production. Jack Antonoff produced all the standard tracks really and I think there's a few other producers on you know the first half of the album so he's like the main producer of it and then on the back half you're gonna get some tracks from Aaron Dexner who I really love as a producer and so I think that the production on here is something that can be enjoyable to listen to. Like I said I wouldn't have minded if it would have been a little bit more dynamic because I feel like sometimes these tracks can kind of blend together in terms of the production or they kind of feel like they're not fully real like there's just a little bit more that can be added on and stuff like that in terms of the production but generally I can appreciate the production on this record. And now let's get into my favorite songs in this album. First one that I have written down is going to be Maroon. Definitely one of my favorite track twos that she's ever done and I really love her vocal delivery on the song. I think that's what really grabs me most on it and it's something that is so satisfying to listen to. I think her songwriting is great. She's a great storyteller. She just really ties in everything together nicely and so I think that this is a brilliant song. Love this song so so much. And then next up I'm gonna have You're On Your Own Kid written down her best track fives in my personal opinion and I feel like it's a welcome addition to everything. The bridge on here is absolutely insane. The song on the song is top tier and she just really takes you on a journey to listen to the song which is something that I truly can appreciate so definitely a highlight on record for me. And then next up I'm going to have Bejeweled written down. I have loved this song from the beginning. Like I said it is giving lover in the absolute best way and so I really appreciate what she's doing on here. It's fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously and that's all I can really ask for. And then next up I have Karma written down which is my favorite song on the record. And I feel like this is one of Taylor's best pop songs easily. And I remember like going into it, I was like, what is it gonna sound like? I thought it was gonna be more of a thing of like vigilante shit. Like I thought it was gonna be how that song sounded. But then she kind of 
flipped it on its head and was like, Karma is my boyfriend and you know, I keep winning and whatever Karma is working in my favor. And so I thought it was really cool of her to do that. And so I really enjoyed it in that aspect. And also this song is ridiculously catchy. I love the way that she owns this song and I love the breakdown and the way that she leads it back into the chorus is genius in my personal opinion. So I absolutely love Karma. Some of her best work in my personal opinion. Next up, I'm going to have Sweet Nothing written down. I think that this is just a lovely song to listen to. I love the piano on here, the lyrics, the bridge is one of the best moments on this entire record. And so everything on the song is just top notch. So I absolutely love this track. And then I also really quite enjoy The Great War, one of my favorite bridges. What else can I say? You already know she writes a great bridge. And I really like the production from Aaron Desner. I feel like it's something that's really dynamic and she had a lot to work with in there. And so I just really like how she paints a picture in terms of this song. So it's something that I really enjoy listening to. And then last up, I'm going to have Paris written down. I think that has a very strong pre-chorus. I think it's very catchy. So I really quite enjoy the song. And I feel like we have a few other highlights on this record. Mastermind is something that's been a fan favorite that I also really enjoy as well. Lavender Haze is a great opener. Now let's get into my skips on this album. So first up, I'm going to have Midnight Rain written down. Like I said, I like the verses of the song. The chorus, pitching her vocals down, I cannot stand it. It just gets on my nerves so, so much. And so that's why I skip this song and that's my personal opinion there. I'm surprised that people like it so much because for me, it's never been one of the best songs on the album, but I consistently see people say like, oh, this is top five on the album. So it's kind of interesting to see other people's opinions in that respect. The next song that I've written down is going to be Vigilante Shit. Like I said before, this sounds like a reputation reject and a bad one at that. I cannot stand the song. And I feel like whenever Taylor tries to do like, oh, I'm edgy songs, you know, stuff like in that vibe, it does not come off well at all. Like it just doesn't work in my personal opinion. For me, it just does not translate at all. I do not believe a single word that she says. And so I hate the lyrics on this song. Call the cat eyes sharp enough to kill a man. And it just keeps getting worse. I don't dress for women. I don't dress for men. Lately, I've been dressing for revenge. Like this song has some of the worst lyrics on the entire album. So I just cannot stand this on any point. Like this song completely loses me. And so this is just one that I don't really enjoy for the most part. Like I said before, if she would have taken the bridge whenever she's like, oh, he was doing the white collar crimes and you know, that entire part. And she would have made that into an entire storytelling song, that would have ate. But with what we were given, I just do not like this song at all. And that's my personal opinions there. And then the other skip that I have on this album is going to be Dear Reader. For me, the only part that I like in the song really is the bridge. I think that the bridge is fantastic and it's something that I really enjoy in the song. For me, I just don't really enjoy this song. After I listen to the album enough to make my updated opinions video on it, I stopped listening to that song and I have not missed it in my rotation since. Basically, I think that this is an interesting album overall because she is revisiting the past and kind of, you know, having new interpretations of that. So I think it's really cool in that regard. I get people who are like, oh, the aesthetic was completely different than what we got. And I would definitely agree with that because the aesthetic was definitely giving like 60s, 70s and the album just doesn't really translate to that at all in my personal opinion. So I see people feeling away about that. And hopefully she does make an album with that kind of sound because I really think that she would be great at it. But it wasn't really something that I was expecting. Like at a certain point, whenever I saw Jack Antonoff was producing the entire thing, and also there was rumors that it was gonna be a pop album, I was like, yeah, it's gonna be pop. So I'm satisfied with the final product overall. And now on to number four, which is going to be Harry's House by Harry Styles. And I'm so happy to have this album because like I said before, I feel like the fine line era went on way too long. And while I did enjoy the album, I was really ready for some new stuff. So to finally have a new album from Harry is definitely a gift. And I definitely feel like this is his best album yet. I feel like he grew as a songwriter. I really love his vocals on this album. The melodies on this album are something that are ridiculously catchy to listen to. So on the whole, this is something that I quite enjoyed. And I definitely think that it doesn't have as many lows as Fine Line did. And for me, it's something that's had more replay value. Kind of giving that 80s sound at points. And it's something that I've really, really loved listening to. And I played it so many times throughout this year. And I was very lucky to get to go see him on tour and seeing him perform a lot of songs from this album live was something that was such a treat to listen to. So yeah, for me, this is definitely going to be my pop album of the year. Only 13 tracks and that's something that I really appreciate in today's day of music because people are just throwing a bunch of songs on the album because people will listen. But I really appreciate artists who take the time to have proper sequencing on the album and they really cut it down to the best stuff for the most part. And also, like I said, he's not reinventing the wheel, but I feel like it's a really great album. And now on to my favorite songs on this record. First up is going to be Daylight. So my updated opinions video, I told you guys, I was like, I have a few songs that I really love on this album, but I cannot narrow it down to a favorite. And after listening to this album for so long, I finally was able to pick one, which is going to be Daylight. This is such a light and breezy track. The melody on this one is absolutely ridiculous. I love it so, so much. And I just really quite enjoy this track. And again, getting to see this live was very, very cool. So I just love everything that's going on with this track. And then next up, I'm gonna have Late Night Talking written down. I cannot stress enough how much I love Late Night Talking. I remember him debuting it at Coachella. And so I was really excited to get to hear it on the record. And like I said, this song is better live just because of the live instrumentation. I feel like it really takes it to the next level. But I feel like the studio version is still 
feel good. This song is ridiculously catchy. It's a banger. And like I said before, I really want this song to get more popular because I feel like it deserves it. Like it deserves that watermelon sugar kind of success in my personal opinion. It just doesn't really get much better than this. This is probably like one of my favorite Harry songs of all time. I just really love pretty much everything about it. Like just what a great song. Next up, I'm gonna have music for Sushi Restaurant written down. So again, this one is better live because of live instrumentation, but the album version is amazing, of course. And I really love the horns on here. I think they are spectacular. The sheer energy on this song is really unmatched by everything else on the album. And it was something that was unexpected for me, but it's something that I love off of the first listen. I love the music video for this. I thought that it was really fun to watch overall. His vocals on here are great. Just everything lines up really well in this song for me. Matilda's a great moment on the record, something that is slower, but something that's very appreciated in terms of the lyrical content, 100%. So you can say that this is the best song on the album, and I wouldn't disagree with you because I really appreciate it. And that bridge hits you hard every single time. And then the last song that I'll mention today is going to be Keep Driving. This song is just something that is so comforting to listen to. And I just really love everything about it. You just want to go out and just drive a car and just have the wind breeze through your hair as you're listening to this track. It's short and sweet. It doesn't overstay its welcome. The bridge on here is absolutely killer. And I just really love his vocal on it. And it's something that I can appreciate on the whole. And so some other quick highlights on this record that I really want to mention. Little Freak. I think that that is a great song. Definitely different than what I expected based on the title, but he really delivered something that is great to listen to. As it was the lead single that was really, really, really popular. And it's something that I quite enjoyed. I love the bridge on here. I think that he leveled up his pen. I like the vocal on here. And so it's something that I enjoy listening to. I feel like I kind of got sick of it just because of its popularity. And also I listened to it a lot of times before the album came out and in context of the album, but on the whole, I think that it's a great song. And so I understand why it's so popular as well. And then last up, I wanted to talk about Boyfriends. Everybody hates Boyfriends. And I feel like I'm one of the only people who actually enjoys the song like I liked it whenever he debuted it at Coachella I can see why people don't like it because all the lyrics and whatever they think it's pandering I can see that but I think that this is a beautiful song I love the guitar in here the bridge and the progression on there I really enjoy the song so it's always one that I've appreciated listening to and now on to the worst songs in the album in my personal opinion so I feel like the worst song on this album by far is going to be daydreaming I feel like it's just not as captivating as the other songs. it was cool to get to see him perform this live and I thought that it worked great as a tour opener but for me this is always one that was like, yeah, it's one of the weaker songs on the album, right? But it's not one that I've started skipping at this point. I haven't started skipping any of the songs on this record. And if I did, it'll only be this one and maybe another one that I'll mention. Just because I feel like once I start skipping it, I'm not going to stop. And I kind of enjoy listening to this all the way through. So I haven't started skipping it yet. Maybe I will in the future. But for me, it's the weakest song on the album. And then also I have Cinema Rundown. So this is one that actually grew on me the more that I listened to it. I think that it's stronger than Daydreaming for sure. It's something I can appreciate the melody more for sure. But on the whole, for me, it's definitely one of the weaker songs the record but I understand why people like it. Overall I think that Harry delivered a great pop record. And now on to number three which is going to be No Thank You by Lil Sims. So this is a record that just came out on a Monday oddly enough because normally artists drop records on Friday so that was kind of something that threw me off a little bit but I was really excited to listen to this because I love Sometimes It Might Be Introvert and that was actually my album of the year last year and so I was really curious to see how she was going to follow it up and she did not disappoint. I feel like this is a strong record overall. Her performances all over these songs and the flow and just she's really engaged in the record and locked in and you can tell that listening to this like she absolutely dominated on here. I love the songwriting on here. I think that she's a strong writer in terms of that. I really love her storytelling all the way throughout this record. The production by Inflow is amazing to listen to and I just feel like there's a lot to love about this record. So it was something that I loved at first listen for sure and my rap album of the year. And so in terms of my favorite tracks, I really love the first song Angel and I really love that lyric whenever she said I had to get a pen when I remember that I'm Jay-Z. I just thought that that was such a cool reference and I love Cleo Soul's work on that song as well and so I think that it's a really nice way to open up the record so I really enjoy that song and then the next song is going to be Gorilla so the instrumentation on here was kind of giving me like soul or jazz vibes which I absolutely love and just the way that she performed over top of that just chef's kiss because she absolutely ate that up and also at points the instrumentation is something that is so grandiose to listen to and so I really enjoyed that aspect about it and then the next song that I've written down is going to be Silhouette so this is something that feels kind of dark and eerie to me because of the instrumentation and also the subject matter as well and it seems like she's talking about herself she says you know some days I was barely eating I couldn't really sleep much and kind of talking about that and so the way that she like dives into everything is super interesting to listen to and you're just waiting at bated breath to see what she's going to say next and she does not disappoint at all so I really think that she killed this track and I really love X it kind of just seems to be like about what black people have dealt with in terms of racism the civil rights movement slavery and her saying like oh people expect us to get over that but no we're not going to do that you know it's something that still affects us to this day for so many different reasons and I just really love the choir on this her songwriting on here is incredible and I really love the instrumentation. It's something that's powerful, it's moving, and I feel like you come out of it feeling exactly how she wants you to feel. So everything on the song was top notch. And then 
then the last song that I've written down is Broken. This is like a seven minute storytelling track and she absolutely kills this one. And I really appreciate whenever artists do long songs like this, but they actually make it worth your while. Everything about this song is just amazing and it's something that leaves you speechless listening to it. A great track that's worth mentioning is going to be No Mercy. On this one, she kind of seems to more so be talking about the music industry and things that they put her through. She's saying they want to rush you to sign a contract and then all of a sudden you're doing all these tours and just everything that you kind of go through being an artist and they don't really care what they put you through as long as you make them a check. And she's saying, you know, they hope that I overdose and they hope that I'm going online and I'm gonna, you know, hate on them there, but I'm smart enough to do it through my music. So it's really eye-opening in terms of that. And so I really like that aspect about it, but I just really love how this song comes together on the whole. In terms of the weaker songs of this album, Sideways, the sample on here, I believe, like at the very beginning, it just sounds off. Like it sounds disjointed. It just does not fit at all. Maybe if the volume was turned down on that part, I could get into it more. But every time it comes on, it just throws me out. So that's the only part that I don't like about the song. Everything else is great, but that part definitely bothers me. I kind of feel like they're producing like, oh, we forgot to throw in the sample and then they just chucked it on. And so it just doesn't feel like well thought of, you know? And then also there's a song called Who Even Cares. I think that this track is just meh overall. I'm not really feeling it too much. Like I feel like it works fine in context of the album, but it's definitely one that I can see myself skipping in the future just because everything else feels a lot more dynamic compared to this one. Also, I don't really like the auto-tune or vocal effect that they put on Lil Simmons' voice. I just don't really think that it's necessary and it's something that kind of bothers me. So in comparison to everything else on the record, I definitely think it's a weaker track on the whole. And I definitely think the first half of this record is stronger than the back half, but that's my opinions there. But regardless of that, I feel like it's still a really strong rap album and it shows why Sims is one of the best rappers out there and she's definitely someone who's gained my attention. And so to be able to have this so soon after sometimes a baby introvert is a gift in itself and she definitely delivered in my personal opinion. And so I'd highly recommend checking it out if you like rap music. And now on to number two, which is going to be SOS by SZA. So Control has been slated as a classic and it's something that's resonating with a lot of people in my age range particularly and just in different age ranges overall and people really love Control. I think it's a great debut album, one of my favorite debut albums ever and I'm sure that she felt a lot of pressure to follow it up. And so we waited five years for this album to come out. In my personal opinion, it was worth the wait. I definitely feel like she grew as a songwriter and I feel like she has so many catchy melodies all over this thing. Like I said, she's a very gifted songwriter in my personal opinion, one of the best songwriters working today. I love how she fits words together. And so I just really love what's going on here from a songwriting perspective and so something that's very good to listen to in terms of that, right? I think her vocal performances on this are stellar and she can really match it to the track and I can really appreciate what she's doing in regards to that and some amazing vocal moments all the way throughout this thing and just really showing her versatility on the whole with a song like F2F which is like a punk rock song news which is just a great R&B track on the whole and then you have the song Ghost in the Machine with Phoebe Bridgers which is this really great alternative track and so I'm really glad that she didn't really box herself into one style and she just tried a bunch of different things. I think that she did all of those things well and I think that's one thing that really works in this record's favor is her versatility and I can really appreciate artists who are able to just tackle so many different genres so I really love what she does in that regard. I think that her production on here is decent on the whole. I really love the kind of stripped back production in a song like Nobody Gets Me which is a more personal song on the record. I love what's going on in the title track in that regard. The production for Shirt is something that really grabs me as well so on the whole I feel like this is a strong sophomore record and it's definitely going to be one of my favorite sophomore albums of all time and this is one that I can see staying in my rotation for a long time and if you enjoy army music like I do you have to listen to this. Like I said before this album cements SZA as the main R&B girl. She has no competition in contemporary R&B in my personal opinion and I think that's just because her music resonates so deeply with a lot of people and also I think that her music is just the best and just what she's able to bring as a songwriter as a singer like it's just something that you get so entranced in so I think she's very talented in that regard so I really love this album and something that I really quite enjoy on the whole and so in terms of my favorite songs on this record I really love the title track like I was mentioning it's something that interpolates Listen by Beyonce which is something that was very cool I love how it opens up the record I also really enjoy Kill Bill as well which apparently is everybody's favorite song on the record but I think it's really nice on the whole so I really quite enjoy this song. The line is something that's captivating just from a songwriting perspective and so it kind of draws you with that. I really like the songwriting on this track. I love her vocal delivery and how she makes everything work in that regard. And I also think that this song is really catchy so I just love it. And then also I really quite enjoy Gone Girl. Like I said I feel like this song is not getting enough appreciation. People should definitely check it out a little bit more because the bridge is definitely one of the best moments on the album in my personal opinion. So I cannot get enough of this song. And like I said I feel like sonically this could fit on control. It's kind of giving me those vibes but I love what she did on this track. Ghost in the Machine with Phoebe Bridgers is the ideal collaboration and like I said it's this like alternative song. I think that the songwriting on here is great. Phoebe has one of my favorite features of the year on this track and I feel like both of them are really able to bring the best out of each other and so I just really love what they are doing in terms of that. Like I was saying I love Nobody Gets Me a more personal song on the record. I love the guitar on that. I also really love Far. Like I said in my album reaction I feel like this is one that really represents the album cover well you know because she's saying stay far away from me and then you look at the album cover and she's just by herself. She's isolated and so I think everything kind of ties together really nicely on there. 
there. I love Shirt. We had to wait over a year to get a song and I feel like the wait was worth it. Like I was saying earlier, I love the production by Jarrett Child, one of my favorite producers of all time. I love the lyrics that she wrote over this and just something that is so, so enjoyable to listen to and just a highlight on the record for me. And last up, I'm gonna have Good Days Run Down. Yes, this was technically released in 2020, but it is still on the album. And like I said before, I think that this is some of SZA's best songwriting to date. This song is just one of her best songs as well and it's just immaculate from front to back. I just love it so, so much. And like I said, whenever the song came out, I felt like everything was healing and there was a period where I listened to this every day with my sister. In terms of the weakest songs on this record, Conceited, meh, meh. It's okay, I can appreciate it in context of the record. I can see myself maybe skipping in the future. We'll have to see how time goes with that. And then I did skip the song with Travis because like I said, I just don't like him as a person because of the entire actual world thing. I also skipped Low because of his ad-libs, like that was something that really bothers me. And in general, I feel like he wasn't necessary on the album. I feel like it was distasteful to have him on the album, but that's my personal opinion in regards to that. And I do feel like Don Tolliver's feature on the song Used wasn't really that necessary. I feel like he added nothing to the track. I feel like SZA could have wrote a better verse over what he was doing on the song, and that's my personal opinion there. At this point, it's something I'll tolerate. It's there, but it's not something that I absolutely love on the song. Also, I definitely think that Hit Different should have made this album for sure. I know that she samples this on Love Language, but Hit Different is such a great track, and it should have been on there instead of one of the weaker songs. I feel like sonically, it could work. Also, I can appreciate the interpolation of Aaliyah's song, I Don't Wanna, on Love Language. I thought that that was a nice touch. So on the whole, I feel like this is a pretty strong album. Are there a few tracks that I would cut down to kind of make it more cohesive to make it a better experience? Sure. But the fact that she released like 23 songs and I like around 20 of them really shows her gift as an artist. Because like I said, a lot of people blow their albums nowadays, but whenever she announced that it was going to be this many songs and all that, I never worried about it because I trust her. She rarely ever misses. All the singles leading up to this album have been amazing. And so this is something I really enjoy as a body of work. Like I said, I think that it's a great sophomore record. And so I'm just really, really pleased to have it on the whole. I love the album cover. Everything just really came together nicely in this album. Like I said, showing the versatility, the vocal performances, the songwriting, the production. And so I just love this album so, so much and excited to keep on listening to it. Definitely my R&B album of the year. And now we're on to my album of the year, which is going to be Renaissance by Beyonce. And so there's just so much to say about this record. Whenever I first listened to it, I thought it was a good album. I definitely didn't think it was one of her best albums based off of first listen. And a lot of people like, oh, this is one of her best works and love it so, so much. And I was like, you know, I don't really get where they're coming from. But as I really sat with this record and I listened to it every single day on repeat for months, I finally started to see the vision. I was like, you know what? They're absolutely right. Because this record right here is Beyonce's artistic peak. I think the songwriting is great. Definitely shout out to the songwriters on this album. Shout out to everyone who worked on it because it's something that's so enjoyable to listen to overall and something that's cool. And then I love Beyonce's vocal performance on here. Like I said, some of you guys need to stop saying that Beyonce can't sing anymore just because she's not singing like how she used to at the beginning of her career. She's choosing to utilize her voice in a different way. It's equally as skillful and as impressive. And she's just showing that off all around the album. So her vocals on here are a treat to listen to, very dynamic. Beyonce is one of the best singers of all time and the woman is only getting better with age. So I think vocally, she just absolutely dominates this record. And then I also really quite love the production on the album. It is so ridiculously dynamic from track to track to track and it's something that I really appreciate because it's something that is so captivating and something that is so well done. I love the incorporation of the sample. Everything just really comes around on this record and I have very few gripes with the production on the whole. I really feel like they nailed the production and the vision that Beyonce was going for. And so this is like a dance album and this is something that Beyonce hasn't really done before and so she absolutely killed it. Very much so came out and it was something that I enjoyed and I feel like I can appreciate it more in context of the album. Part of me also kind of got sick of this one just because I listened to it a bunch before the album came out and then again a lot in context of the album. Not one of the best records on the album but I do like it. But the fact that Beyonce tackled a completely different genre and killed it shows her versatility and the woman can sing anything that she wants and versatility is something that I greatly appreciate in a singer. So Beyonce is just going to show you everything that she's capable of on this record and this was just really a treat to listen to on the whole and something that I deeply deeply appreciate. This record is very cohesive because the transitions on here are absolutely flawless and I love how this record just comes together on the whole. And this is an ode to LGBTQ culture and ballroom culture and the communities have generally said that they appreciate it because you can tell that Beyonce came into this album with a certain respect and intention and she's highlighting key figures and that's something that really matters and then she also mentioned that I believe it was dedicated to her uncle Johnny who unfortunately passed from HIV and someone who was really involved in her life and so that's also something important to note so I feel like having those elements of it and just the way that she tied together this record is something that's very intentional I believe she spent a few years recording this record and one thing I appreciate about Beyonce is that she is a perfectionist 
dollars and the wait from lemonade was certainly worth it yes i know that she's released projects since lemonade but this is her first solo album since lemonade and so i just really think that she delivered across the board and like i said before she really had to come and show the music industry what amazing music is because the music industry overall like the standard has gotten lower and beyonce said i'm gonna show you exactly what excellence is and so on this entire album it is just something that is so wonderful to listen to i love the journey that she takes you on it's just something that is so well thought out and this album deserves every single award and i really hope that it picks up a lot because i just loved it so so much and it's definitely one that i would highly highly recommend and her best album in my personal opinion at this point in terms of my favorite tracks off this album my absolute favorite song is going to be virgo's groove like i was just saying in my songs of the year video i came to the realization after listening to this album a bunch that virgo's groove is the best song on the album the production on here is so ridiculously cool and intricate so i just love it from a production standpoint right her vocals on here are magnificent to listen to i love what she's doing on there and like i said the second half of the song is some of the best vocal work that she's done throughout her entire career i love the background vocals on this song i love the confidence that she has on the song like she just nailed this song it's like a six minute song and it does not feel that way at all and so i really appreciate the attention to detail everything on the song is flawless and that's why it's my song of the year and then i also really love the transition from plastic off the sofa into this song is my favorite transition on the entire album though i love all the transitions next song that i've written now is going to be plastic off the sofa which at one point was my favorite song on this album and i still rate it highly of course and so on this one it's a little bit of a different vibe compared to everything else on the album you know a little bit slower but not by much and so again vocally you know she's really showing off amazing musicality beyonce has some of the best musicality out there and so she just makes all these little runs that she's doing sound very easy but if you've seen people try to attempt this on social media they're really missing the intricacies of what this woman is doing and so that just really shows her strength as a vocalist on the whole so i really appreciate it on that standpoint and just a great track overall the writing is here the production is here the vocals are here really enjoy it and the next song that i've written down is going to be alien superstar this song really lives up to the title this song is something that is so ridiculously intriguing and cool and you want to be exactly where she is describing it and so the way that she owns this song with the confidence with the vocal delivery like it is just something that is so exquisite to listen to the production on here some of my favorite on the entire album which is saying a lot because the production on the entire album is amazing but this is definitely highlight just in terms of the production alone and i feel like she just really delivered over it i love how the song progresses i love the outro to the song i love the lyrics i love the edits that people are making to the song as well as other songs on the album the hive is super super creative yeah this is definitely one of my favorite beyonce songs of all time as well as plastic off the sofa and virgo's juve of course and she just really ate this thing up so definitely a highlight for me of course the next song that i've written down is going to be covet this song is just so much fun to listen to i put it on and it just makes me so happy and just not have a care in the world and just forget where all of my worries are and i just really you know find myself getting so synced into this song and that's something that i really appreciate in a song sometimes you just need that and so i think that beyonce's vocals on here are impeccable to listen to i really love her tone on here i love the harmony and i love the harmony throughout the entire record of course but i feel like for me it really stands out the most on this track right and so i also really quite love the lyrics for this song just great in terms of that i really love the guitar on here by now rogers production on here is amazing and like my feel good song of the year and this song just deserves all the praise that it gets and the last song that i've written down is going to be america has a problem this was love at first listen for me personally i love the lyrics on here just the way that she owns this track is probably my favorite part about it i love the sample on here just everything was incorporated so so nicely when you listen to the song you just want to get up and dance you want to go have some fun and so that's what i really appreciate about the song you know based on the title you think it's going to be this big political song and it's the complete opposite of that and so it's just a really really refreshing track to listen to i was really surprised to see people saying oh this is one of the worst songs in the album or oh i skipped the song and it's like i feel like you guys maybe need to give this another chance everyone is entitled to their opinion of course but for me this has always been a highlight off of the record and just one that you kind of get addicted to the more that you listen to it so those are going to be my favorite tracks in the album and then really quickly i want to talk about some songs that grew on me so if you watch my reaction you know that i hated thick off first listen like i could not stand that song i felt like the second half of the song i could enjoy it but i just did not like that at all i was like why is she talking all over the song like it just wasn't for me but thick really has grown to me i do enjoy that song now i enjoy a move with grace jones and thames and i never thought that move was gonna grow on me if i'm being honest i just thought i was never gonna like the song but it slowly grew on me it's something that is fun i really enjoy what they both brought to it for sure and then another great moment on this record is going to be energy with being something that is so short and sweet but i really appreciate beam's contribution to it and i think that beyonce is wonderful on the track as always and then lastly i guess i can mention summer renaissance which is something that i've 
always really appreciated off of my first listen. I just really love the way that it ends off the record, of course. And so it's something I feel like people should be giving more appreciation to. Next up, I wanted to talk about a song that I'm kind of meh on. Like, I kind of just tolerate it for the album listening to it, but it's not really a favorite, which is going to be Pure Honey. I actually predicted that this was going to be one of my favorite songs on the album, and I was not right in terms of that, and hey, it is what it is. And I still definitely think its inclusion on the album is important. I think it fits. It's just, I don't really care for the first half of the song very much. Like, it's something I've gotten used to, and I can listen to it, but I always love the second half of the song, and I feel like she should have made those two separate songs, because I would enjoy listening to it more that way, but that's kind of a song I've just been lukewarm off. And now let's get on to my skips on this record. First off, All Up In Your Mind. I never liked this song off of first listen, really. There might have been like a part that I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. But once people pointed out that the song sounded dated and like it could have been on her I Am Sasha Fierce album, I was like, hmm, maybe that's why I don't like it. Cause something about the song just wasn't really clicking in with me. And I think that's what's not really clicking in. I just don't really like the production that much. And also I just don't really care for the vocal delivery as well. And so this is just a song I do not enjoy. And it's just gonna be a skip for me on this record. And then the other skip that I have is going to be Heated. And so why do I skip Heated? It's not because it's a bad song. I actually do enjoy the song. I really like how she goes off at the end. I can appreciate it on the whole. It's because Drake has a songwriter's credit on it and I cannot stand Drake for so many different reasons. So based off of principle, that is why I do skip the song on the album. But on the whole, man, she delivered an amazing record. This is going to be one of my favorite records of the decade. I'm sure, like I said, it deserves all of the awards that it gets. And if you've not given this album a listen, if you listen to anything I talk about today, you have to check it out. And there's a lot of people, oh, I love old Beyonce, blah, blah, blah. Like maybe you just need to give new Beyonce a chance and maybe you would enjoy it as well. Because just the way that she was able to really tap into dance music and just dominate it, once again, shows her versatility. So I really think that you should check out this record if you like Beyonce at all, because she really delivers something that is worth the wait in my personal opinion. And there's a reason why every publication is putting it at number one, because it truly deserves it. And it's just something that was so well done on the whole. Now I wanted to share my favorite EPs with you that were released this year. So first up, I want to talk about Kelly Clarkson since Kelly Yoki EP. So this is just full of covers. And originally it wasn't something that I was gonna listen to because I was like, oh, covers, like, fine. I'll just like wait on the original music or whatever. But something in me was like, you know what? You should give it a try. And I'm really, really glad that I did because I cannot tell you guys how many times that I've come back to this project throughout the year. It's something that has been in my rotation one way or another. Whether that's one song, whether that's the whole EP. Mine is Trampoline because I don't care for the song on the whole. Her vocal performance is good. I just don't really like it on the whole. I feel like vocally she's at the best place that she's been her entire career. And she just keeps getting better. We open up with Boo By You, which is something that I really enjoy, and then we go on to her cover of Call It My Name by The Weeknd, which is definitely one of my favorite tracks on here. I wasn't really that familiar with the song before going into this, and then I heard her version, loved it so much. I heard his version, and in comparison, I just really couldn't get into it. I feel like she ate him up vocally, and I love what she added on to the song. I love the intensity of what she did with it, so I love it so, so much. And then we go on to her rendition of Billie Eilish's song called Happier Than Ever, and I love it so much more than the original. I feel like it's so emotive and she just really connected with it and locked in just vocally. This is something that is incredibly impressive on the whole. And then next up is going to be when she did Queen of the Night, which was originally done by Whitney Houston. And as I said before, Whitney Houston is one of the greatest singers of all time, one of my favorite singers of all time, the voice for a reason all respect to Whitney Houston, of course. And I prefer this over the original because of the arrangement. Whitney's version, it kind of starts in one place and it goes the exact same way all the way throughout. There's no real progression to it. But in Kelly's version, she makes the effort to start it off a little bit slower and she really builds it up. And vocally, this one, wow. Like she really, really devoured this. And what I really like about this is that she found a way to make it her own, but she also kept the elements of the song that people like. So it wasn't like she completely changed up the arrangement a whole lot. Like I said, she did make it more dynamic, but I really feel like everything that she added to it was for the better. And this moment is definitely my favorite on the entire EP and the song that I come back to the most. And I just love what she did with it so, so much. So I feel like if you're gonna check out one song on the EP, you have to check this one out because she absolutely killed this. And covering Winnie Houston is difficult. 90% of singers can't do her justice, but Kelly was able to do it, and I really feel like that shows off her gifts as a vocalist for sure. And then next up is Trampoline, and I already discussed it. Not personally for me, though I do like her vocal in it. And then she ends it off with Fake Plastic Trees by Radiohead. I don't know if I've heard the original before, but I really love her version. I think that it is something that is beautiful, and I really like how it ends off the record, and just, I feel like she really shows off everything vocally in a tasteful way, and so everything was done really nicely in terms of that. And so something that's short and sweet, something that I love listening to, and it's just something that's made me that much more excited 
excited for her next record and they confirmed that she should be releasing something next year and so I'm not super familiar with the discography I've listened to a few records I really respect her as a vocalist I think that she's a great writer as well and so next year I'm really planning on deep diving into her entire discography and just really appreciating everything more because I feel like it deserves it so yeah I cannot wait for the next record and on this there's going to be moments where your jaw just drops and you are blown away by what she's doing vocally so I'd highly recommend listening to this because I really feel like it shows off her versatility as a vocalist and it's really enjoyable to listen to. Next up I have Flo's the lead EP written down and so they just recently debuted this year and so I really think that they are very talented and you can tell that they study a Brandy, a Mariah, a Beyonce. It's all there in the presentation and the harmony and I just really love how everything is coming together and I think that they are just so amazing overall. Individually they are very talented but then whenever they come together and you hear the harmony and everything that they're capable of it's just something that really blows you away. So I really love what they are doing in that regard. All very gifted. I think that they're good songwriters as well. So Cardboard Box was the debut single and I added that to my list of my favorite debut singles of all time and so that's a really important distinction because I really had tough criteria for that list and so the fact that they were able to break it really shows off their talents. I love what they're doing with R&B music because I feel like it has those elements like I was talking about with the harmony and kind of like general vibe that you would get from like a Destiny's Child for example right but it doesn't sound dated. They're still able to make it fresh and like have their own personality onto it and I think that that's really important of course and so I just really appreciated this on the whole and I feel like there's no bad songs in this entire EP for sure. My favorite song in here is definitely going to be Summertime. I feel like it lives up to the title. Something that is breezy, something that's fun, that's cute to listen to. They all dominate on here. Love this track so much. It's gotten a lot of play out of me this year. And then I also really love their single Not My Job that they released and then they added it on to a new version of the EP. And so there's this moment whenever the production drops out and you just hear the vocal and I love it. And I love these little live performances that they've been putting out on their YouTube channel as well. And I really appreciate that they are just engaging with fans and also releasing music in a timely manner and not making you wait forever for the next single. So they're working hard. I appreciate what they're doing. I think that they are all very gifted individually and together as well. I think that they become even stronger. So if you like R&B music as much as I do, definitely check them out. And then the last EP that I've written down today is going to be Coco Jones's What I Didn't Tell You. And shout out to a subscriber for recommending that I listen to this because honestly, I do not think that I would have gotten to it in my own time. So again, thank you so much for the recommendation. And this is something that I really loved on first listen. And so I just think that the melodies on this thing are ridiculous to listen to. I love songwriting on here. It just really hooks you in as well. And our vocals over this are really delightful to listen to. And so they wanted me to do like an entire review. And so I already listened to it on my own time and I had other videos that I was doing. So I haven't really had the time to give this the attention that it deserves. But I decided that I would share my thoughts on every single track with you. So the first song that I've written down is going to be crazy for me. I think that this is a banger and this is definitely my favorite song on the entire EP. The melody just really hooks me in on there. Everything on the song is top tier. I love the vocal. I love the writing. I love the production. Just definitely a highlight for me and I did add it to my favorite songs of 2022 list and then next up is going to be Caliber. So I think that this has a really slick production to it and I think that she really dominated it so I really love what she's doing vocally on it. It's just something that's cool overall and has kind of like a classy vibe to it so I really like what she did in terms of that. Production is great as well and I also really like the lyrics so everything on the song works. Next song that I've written down is going to be Double Back. I feel like this is a smooth song overall to listen to. I really like the chorus, the production, the vocal, and the lyrics as well. And then next up is going to be ICU. Definitely a stand out on this EP for sure. Her vocal performance on here is something that is stunning to listen to so I really love what she's doing in terms of that. Next up is going to be No Chaser. I think that this is a good change of pace and I really like the melody on it. I can appreciate the lyrics and the vocal as well as the production. And then the last track that I've written down here is going to be Spend It. I think that this is a good song. Overall, this EP is something that are short and sweet. And so I remember listening to it recently and I was expecting another song to come on and it didn't. I was like, oh, it's already over. Like it's something that really flies by in the best way. And again, if you love R&B, you have to check this out. I feel like you'll like at least a song or two on here. I feel like everybody involved did a nice job. Next up, I wanted to talk about albums that I would add on to my 2021 list. And every year I've been doing this just because like sometimes I'll film the video and then like a week later I'll listen to something like, dang, I should add it to my list or I get the stuff that I really want wanted to get around to the next year so I kind of like to add this on at the end. So first up is going to be When Christmas Comes Around by Kelly Clarkson. Definitely one of my favorite Christmas albums of all time. I feel like there's some great originals on here with Christmas Isn't Cancelled Just You. I love Santa Can't Hear Me with Ariana Grande and the vocals that they did on there are just gorgeous to listen to. She has a great cover of Jingle Bell Rock. She also did Rocking Around the Christmas Tree as well. I really like the duet with Chris Stapleton. I feel like there's a lot of moments on this record to love on the whole. I don't really remember caring for is Blessed just because of the chorus is something that I don't really enjoy 
listen to but everything else on that song I enjoy but that part really bothers me. Overall I feel like this is a well done Christmas album that really shows off Kelly's talents as a singer and songwriter and so if you enjoy Christmas music I'll definitely recommend giving this a listen this holiday season for sure. And then next up I have A Beginner's Mind by Sophie and Stevens and Angela D'Augustine written down and so I believe I listened to Carrie and Lola. I think I like that record. I think I saw people talking positively about this record so I was like you know let me give it a try and it is just something that I love listening to. I love the songwriting on here. I love the production. I just really love their vocal on here. It's something that really sets me at ease to listen to and one of the most beautiful records that I've ever heard so I recommend giving this a listen. The next one that I've written down is going to be Yola Stand For Myself and so this is one that really blew me away off of first listen and definitely going to be one of my favorite sophomore records of all time and so I just really love what she's doing on a song like Be My Friend for example. I love Starlight so so much. Definitely highlight for me on the record. Now You're Here is a great song as well so I love the album cover so that's like one part that wanted me to listen to it and then also Mike Disney said that it was a great album so like might as well check it out and so really glad I listened to it. I quite like her debut album as well. And then last up I have Girl Named Tom Hits from the Road. I feel like there's some decent songs on here. It's mostly made up of covers but I really like whenever they did Carolina In My Mind for example. I really also like Evergreen as well so I'd recommend giving it a listen. And so overall I feel like 2022 has been the best year of the 2020s for music so far. A lot of strong releases this year and so I'm really excited to see everything that's happening next year but this video was a lot of fun to do. Alright so that's gonna be it for my favorite albums and EPs of 2022 and I'd love to know what you guys are thinking down below in the comments. Do you agree with some of my picks? Are there some picks that you're like why didn't you put down a list? And just let me know what you guys are thinking down below in the comments because I'd really love to know that and also see your list as well of course. Also I've done reactions on a lot of these records and for a couple of them I did my updated opinions like a few weeks later and shared you know what songs ruined me which then kind of gave a better analysis on it on the whole as I listened to it more. So some of them would have came up through the cards throughout the entire video but of course I'm going to try to link everything down below in the description so if you want to check out my renaissance reaction for example it'll be down there in like my Beyonce playlist and all that stuff so it'll be down there and then also some of those videos will be linked at the end of this video of course. Also if you want to see my favorite songs of the year I will have that linked at the end of this video and down below in the description if you guys want to check that out. And so that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it give it a like down below. It helps me a lot on YouTube algorithm. I very much appreciate it. You guys can also subscribe right down below if you want to see more videos like this. If you the bell you get a notification whenever I post you now miss when new videos come out. The first link down below in the description is going to be my second channel. Check me out on there if you want to see more content from me. And then I'm also going to have my Twitter. I have actually been doing some Twitter spaces recently where we've been talking about Mariah Carey. If you've seen my channel long enough you know Mariah is my favorite artist of all time. So we've actually had the opportunity to talk about some of her albums and I've been speaking on those spaces and so if you guys want to check that out go over to my Twitter and listen to that but it's been something that's really fun to do as well and so I'm excited to have more of those discussions for sure. And then I'm also going to have my Instagram, my Spotify as well and then I'm also going to have my TikTok as well. Like I told you guys I've been getting a lot more active on there and I started sharing my thoughts on the Billboard Hot 100 charts every week and I've been doing a lot more creative stuff on there. Some ideas that kind of just don't really work as full form videos because there's not a lot of you know content to work with so I've been having a lot of fun on there so definitely follow me on there if you want to see like more of my music takes and ideas as well and then I'm also going to have a link to stream all these records on Apple Music and Spotify if you are interested and lastly I'm going to have a link to educate you guys on the situations. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.